Welcome back, and I guess since it's October, I better make like every other channel on YouTube and cover some horror stuff. So this month I'll be taking a look at some horror classics for Front Room's Spooktober. Let's start with one of the classics, the very building blocks of horror filmmaking. If I mention Frankenstein, or specifically Frankenstein's monster, it's a fair bet that you've pictured a great hawking figure with a flat head and bolts in his neck. It's an image that permeates culture, from kids' cartoons, sitcoms, comics, films, party costumes. It's quite possibly the first horror icon any of us are aware of growing up. Jack Pierce's makeup design for Universal's 1931 version of Frankenstein truly has lasted the test of time. One of the earliest blockbusters, the film, directed by James Whale, consistently took money during a 20-year run on and off screens, with the Universal reporting revenues equivalent to just over $115 million, taking inflation into account, by 1951. The third of Universal's monster features, after Phantom of the Opera and Dracula, it was adapted from a stage play version of Shelley's story. It retains the basics of the novel, but pretty much all the details are changed. With a Henry Frankenstein instead of a Victor, the creature is mute instead of being articulate, there's the introduction of a hunchbacked assistant, but the main beats are there. The obsessed scientist, the initial good relationship between the Doctor and his creation, the creature's gentle nature until he is pushed to violence. Although interestingly, in the film version, the first time the creature kills, it's completely by accident as he plays with a young girl by a lakeside. Nearly 90 years after its release, the film still looks striking. A mixture of gothic horror stylings, elements of impressionism, such as the opening graveyard scene, the modernity of the laboratory set against the cold castle walls, all woven together by director Whale. The resurrection scene, of course, sits alongside the makeup design as an element of the film which has burrowed itself firmly into popular culture. The cracking electricity, the flashes of lightning, the rumbling thunder, and the excited shrieks of Dr. Frankenstein. Boris Karloff's performance as the creature is, of course, another almost legendary element of the film. But equally important is Colin Clive's turn as Henry Frankenstein. His performance is fantastic as he moves from the exhilaration of his success to revulsion for what he has created and finally into exhaustion and fear as the creature stalks his fiance. Sadly, Clive would pass away at 37 after losing his battle with alcoholism only six years later. Admittedly, some of the scenes featuring the secondary cast are a bit dry and stiff, with characters often explaining events to each other as a way of making sure the audience was keeping up. And in places, the narrative does feel a bit truncated with a running time of just over an hour. Is the film worth watching today? Well, if you're a fan of horror, it most certainly is. The Universal series is where blockbuster horror truly began, and the foundations laid down by these films can still be traced today. As Kim Newman observes, without Frankenstein, there wouldn't be a genre called the horror film. If you're not a horror fan, I'd still recommend it. As mentioned, the film is beautiful to look at, and of course, by today's standard, the horror elements are tame, but there is still plenty of interest from the inherent drama of the tale. And so, with Hollywood's first steps into horror filmmaking, we've taken our first steps into Front Room's Spooktober. Look out for more, coming soon!